What's up guys, welcome back to Daily Crypto Analysis. So what we're gonna do tonight is look at the running return on investment of Bitcoin. And how we're going to do this is by breaking it up into discrete quantities of time at which you've held Bitcoin. So for instance, on this first chart, we're looking at if you held Bitcoin for one year, what would your return on investment have been at any given point in time? Okay, for instance, if you're right here, you're at 9-22-2017, that means on that day, you bought Bitcoin on 9-22-2016. So your return on investment at that point, this is a logarithmic scale, would be around 800% or so. This shows the entire distribution of where you would have been at any given point in time up to today if you held on for one year. Now, the way this is made since it's on a logarithmic scale we need to make them all positive numbers so a hundred percent is your base investment so if you're at a hundred you're at even if you're down here which is the lowest values this is at 0.2 you're at an 80 percent loss right you're at 20 percent so 20 percent of your initial investment of a hundred percent is an 80 percent loss so that's what we're looking at here, guys. So the first thing you'll notice, and this is really key, Bitcoin has been on a macro level diminishing return on investment. So that's not to say that you've been losing money, obviously. It's to say that over time, holding for one year has been less profitable in relation to other points in time. So in other words, the peak level that you could reach at any given point has been less than the peak that you could have achieved in a past time. So you can see what's interesting. We've come to this theoretical peak four times now, and this isn't going to be a popular thing to say, but unfortunately, back in February to April, we actually came to this peak that has denoted the beginning of the bear market three times in the past. Each peak has exactly hit this peak that we just hit. Now that's not to say that definitively this is signaling a bear market. It's only to say that in the past it has signaled that. Now it draws into question, fundamentally, is the market just different now? And I tend to think that given that there are actual institutions invested in Bitcoin now, that has in fact fundamentally changed the market. For the fact that when you have more money, especially more institutional type money in a market, it tends to be harder for those institutions to, you know, come and go with their money as retail investors might do. I tend to believe that because of that fact, because of the fundamental nature of how institutions work, how how many you can look at, you can look at how many addresses have become long-term holders and it's increasing. These combination of factors tell me, I don't think that we're going to, in the past when we've hit this, we've within, within about a year, we've been down here at this point where you would actually be at a loss on your investment had you held for one year. So, I tend to believe that is not what's going to happen now and that we're actually going to be in a phase like this where we're you know slowly moving up or sideways even and then we're going to come back and reach this level again in likely in my opinion based on various analysis that we've done on the channel in the past it seems that late 2022 to 2023 seems to be a time when it makes a lot of sense for us to reach this peak again. And from there, maybe we do come back down. But I just don't feel like right now, and, and there's a lot of global macroeconomic uh, factors that play into this. It's not, crypto doesn't uh, operate in a bubble. Other things could always influence where we're at in the market cycle. But all things considered, I feel like we're likely to continue not heading in this in this concave down direction and that we're more likely to head towards another test of this theoretical market cycle peak. At some point, 
likely down here. We'll have to see how this plays out, but that's, that's how, you know, I'm viewing the market at the moment. So this just shows the times that we've hit this macro level, this macro level theoretical maximum. And like we said, this show, if you were to come out to here, and this is something to take note of, you, you might ask, so where would our returns be at that time? And if we did hit the level in late 2022 or 2023, which would be approximately this area here, you'd be somewhere between, and since this is a logarithmic scale, one, two, three, about 400, somewhere between 500 to about 350% if you held for one year. Guys, anytime you're looking at your, anytime you're looking at your profits on a logarithmic scale, it's you're doing all right because these we're going from, from a basically a thousand up to 10,000 up to a hundred thousand percent gains. So this now overlays the two year ROI. In other words, if you were to hold Bitcoin for two years, this would be your return on investment. So two things to note here, guys, first, you can see this macro scale diminishing returns is intact on the two-year chart, just like it is on the one-year chart. So if you held here for two years, you'd be up here at, at around 30, 40,000. Down here, you'd only be at two, three, about 4,000. And here, if you held for two years, maybe between 14 to 15, 1600 or so. So you can see it's dropping as time goes on. But guys, listen to what I'm saying. 1600%, 1500%, that's still massive returns. And that's on Bitcoin. That's not even including the altcoins. Bitcoin is, it's the, it's the market mover. So it has all the money in it. It's slower to move. So we're talking about 1500, 1600% gains on Bitcoin. So just put that in perspective, guys. So the second thing I wanted you to take note of here, look at the time that you're negative. So below the 100% line is negative. Relative to the amount of time that if you hold one or two years, the time that you're negative is actually very low. That is to say, if you hold for a year or you hold for two years, it's very likely that you're going to be positive. And if you do get negative, typically when you're in these, when you're in these time ranges that if you held at this point for a year and you're negative, when you're in these time ranges, guys, usually a bull market is right around. A lot of times these are just the absolute best buying opportunities because if you look actually both times when you started getting negative on these, with these people that were holding for a year, when they started getting negative, that's when the bull market was getting ready to get kicked off. So if you just bought at any of these points, basically, if you go from 715, 2015 out to around 715, 2016, which maybe would put you somewhere around here, you can see you were positive and then you were really positive if you just kept on holding. That's just something to take note of guys, holding, is always the better play. If you're starting to get wrecked, Bitcoin and time will save you. Bitcoin and time. That's something that, that's a really important point. So this just shows the two year and how it's pretty much sticking to the same, the macro level maximum. Now you should note that we didn't actually hit the maximum on at this level, but we did hit it at the most recent level. We got close though. And these levels, guys that are hitting the maximum, that's just a few days. And that all falls within the margin of error because it's all happening so fast. There's so much money, so much retail money piling in the dumb money coming in right at the end that these, if you overshoot this line or undershoot it by some, some percent, it's all within the margin of error. And when you're talking about like how rapidly these markets inflate and then deflate right at the end. So this is just showing basically the times where you're down and you can see relative, like we said, the times you're down are such a small percentage of time. This just shows, even if you're down, look how rapidly it starts to rise up. It's just usually a month or two, several months here was actually one of the worst times and maybe a half. Yeah. Based on this scale, maybe about nine months or so. That would have been your worst instance. And look, if you hold for two years, look how infrequently even two years is with relation to one year. You're, it's very rare that you hold for two years and you're negative. So guys, now we're looking at the three-year ROI. And again, you're seeing the same macroeconomic, or sorry, the macro level scale 
where you're getting this downward trend that even if you hold for three years, your profits aren't going to be as good. And things like stock to flow model, they're just completely discounting things like this, guys. It's because there's so much money in Bitcoin. It's almost a trillion dollar asset. To get up to $2 trillion gets you up to 100,000 essentially. And imagine like four trillion gets you to get you to two hundred thousand. So think of the money, think of the quantity of money that has to come in order to drive up these prices where stock to flow is predicting a million dollar average Bitcoin price. Listen, if he's right, I'll be I'll be the first one to I'll be as happy as anyone else, let's put it that way. But it just doesn't, it, I don't think it fits. I don't think it fits the data. And we have a lot of data at this point. We it's not as much data as something like gold or the S and P, but it's a lot of data. We have a lot of data showing the definitive macroeconomic trend of Bitcoin. And it doesn't compute to say that we're all of a sudden going to explode and then start getting 10,000% gains again. That type of money just doesn't exist. So just keep this stuff in perspective, guys. Now this shows the four year ROI. Interestingly, with the four year ROI, we've kind of been in this zone here for quite a while now, basically back since 2016. So if you can hold for four years, although it has been trending down, and in fact, you're at one of the lowest four year ROI points ever right now, as you would expect, this is all going to trend down but you're still getting huge gains, guys. All right, guys, so this chart shows us the one month ROI. So basically, if you bought and held for one month, this would have been your returns over any given time period of since Bitcoin's inception. This has a lot of interesting information on it, but you can see that there have been a few times where you could have got absolutely wrecked in one month. And actually one of the, one of the worst times was Pretty recently in 2018, if you bought on 1-5-2018, you would have been down 60% on 2-5-2018. Okay. So if you bought on 2-12-2020, you would have been down 53%. Okay. In, in March of 2020. On March 12th. And that makes sense, right? That was the COVID capitulation. So another bad one was in, if you bought on May 7th of 2020, you would have been down 43%. So there have been a lot of times recently where you could have got absolutely wrecked. But again, if you just held, like we said, like the entire point in this video was if you just held one year, and this shows the people that were making those huge gains, it was people that were buying buying the dip, buying the huge dips. These like little 20% dips, buying those could, it could benefit you in the short term, or you could just continue to get wrecked if you were buying in, if you were buying in May when we, you know, first went down, you probably made it back by now, but these small dips don't usually mean anything or aren't going, they're not going to buy, they're not going to result in you being up huge in a short term period. But these big dips like COVID, like the 2018 event, any of these, these guys will usually result in you when you buy the huge dips, when you buy the times it goes down to the 200 week moving average or wicks down towards the 300 week moving average, you should have you realistically guys, if you take a look at it, go look at some historical charts, you should have buy orders placed on the 200 and 300 week moving average, not financial advice. But take my word for it and go look at a chart. Anytime it goes down to those levels, historically have been a time where if you put in a big buy then, you're going to make a short-term windfall. So that's just something to think about. Now, the last thing I wanted to show you. So if you bought Bitcoin at one month and held Bitcoin for one month at any point in time, you have a 59% chance of being positive at the end of one month, okay? If you held for one year, 81% of the time, you would be positive. If you held for two years, 90% of the time, 
if you held for three years, 2,964 days of the data that I analyzed out of 2,997. So 2,964 out of 2,997. So 33 days, guys, if you held for three years, would you be negative at the end of those three years? And what do you guys think happened? So if we go back and look, what do you think happened for these 33 days that these guys were negative? And this one day right here, yeah, they went on immediately, almost immediately, a massive bull run. So the point is, guys, even if you're down, even if it looks terrible, especially if you're a long-term holder and it gets down, you probably have really good things coming to you. Look, these guys are, these are three-year holders from December, 2020. What happened late December, 2020? They went on a massive run right after it, right? At minimum, they were up, if they just held a few months, they were up 300%. So keep it in perspective, guys. Just remember. Oh, and, and one last point. Four years, 100% of the time, if you're a four-year holder, there has never been a time in Bitcoin's history where if you held for four years that you have been negative. So with that, go on and hodl. All right. I appreciate you guys. See you.